Hello there, how are we doing? I thought I would, in these days of sort of isolation, I thought I would do a few more live things. Now, I've not done a um, YouTube before. I've done some uh, Facebook lives before, and I'll do some more of those. I'll do one tomorrow, actually, on Ben's Harp Club Facebook. So today I'm going to talk about seven points about tone for harmonica players. So here's the first one. I've actually done a course called 27 Points About Tone, but this is just going to be the sort of basic stuff. So I'm using a G harmonica, diatonic harmonica in the key of G, 10 holes. And um, let's look at the very first one. It's how, you, it's how you connect the harmonica with your mouth, the actual interface. So... You might think you have it just on the edge of your lips. But in fact, this is not the way to do it. So we're going to put it inside the mouth. We're going to open the teeth. And we're going to try and put it further in. The further in it goes, the better it will sound, generally speaking. Don't swallow it. I did that once, got it back three days later. So I'm going to try and get it really far in. So I'm guessing you've got a harmonica there with you. Any key will do. If you want to do it in key of G as well, that will be even better because then you're going to sound exactly the same as me, give or take. So just shove it in, eat it. <laughs> and just gently breathe in and out. I'm basically going to use holes one and two for this whole session today. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two is inside the mouth, you need to be very cavernous. It needs to be very spacious. You know when you've eaten a potato and it's too hot and you go, oh, croto, too hot. Well, it's kind of like that. So inside the mouth, cavernous, spacious. Because uh, most instruments, you know, like a piano here, it has a sound box and a guitar and a ukulele and trumpet, violin. They all have sound boxes. Well, with the harmonica, the sound box is you. You're the sound box. So we need to open you up as much as possible. So that's what we're trying to do today. So we shove the harmonica in. We make this lot as spacious as possible. Let's try it. Crabby harmonica, let's go. <laughs> And try the opposite, then you can see, don't listen to me. Try it out for yourself and see what works for you. But try the opposite of it. If you make it really small. Now let's try the way I've told you. Do you hear any sound difference? Should do. So we're shoving it in the mouth, we're making it nice and cavernous. The next point about tone is we want to open this bit here. So this is the glottal aperture. So we're going to try and open this. Hi, Manuel. How are you doing? All the way from Brazil. Welcome. And uh, how are we going to open this? I would say play with hot air. Well, let's, let's tell you what. Take your harmonica there and let's just steam it up like it was a mirror, like you're just about to polish it. I'm sure you polish your harmonica every day. Now you get that feeling, it's slow, hot air traveling nice and slowly. And this opens up the throat. It's a bit like, you know, if you're in a meeting at work, those of you who work, I don't work, I just do this. <laughs> if you're in a meeting at work and you, you're, you feel a yawn coming on and you want to try and stifle it, and you think, oh, that's right, nobody can see me. So you try and stifle it. That's your throat really opening up wide. So it's like a yawn or like playing with hot air. So try that now and then switch it off to see if you agree.
Thank you, US Grant. Hope you get home soon. <laughs>
Connect the harmonica to your face. Get it into your bones. Can you try that for me now? Go right ahead. How are you getting on? Tell me. Now, it's easy to forget this stuff. I have to keep reminding myself to do it. Connect your hands to your face. And remember the other six, the other five things. We haven't done number seven yet. So you remember, you push it, push the harmonica further into your mouth. You can see how far it's in. You make the inside of your mouth nice and spacious and cavernous. You play with hot air, that opens this. You have good posture. That opens this, and you imagine this is nice and wide and open and free. You play from the belly, so you can learn to harness that breathing. Not terribly easy, but this will come if you practice it. And um, the next one is the hands. And the last one, I'm going to give you a really great exercise to do in a minute. So first, let's just look at one. I want to show you a, a Jews harp because this, this is a Vietnamese Jews harp or a Dan Moy, they call it over there. And here it is. And it's a lovely, beautiful instrument, really nicely designed. And it is part of the harmonica family. That's how it works. It has a central tongue or lamella and or reed, if you like. And um, it's going to resonate in whatever space I give it. Not much space. I mean, too much space. Now I close it up a bit. And if I open my mouth inside, or close it. When I close my mouth, hardly any space for it to vibrate. And that's with me with opening it as much as possible. But look what happens when I play with hot air. I open the throat. So you'll hear sort of boing, boing, boing. And then you'll hear a clunk when I open this. And you'll hear the sound change, I think. Did you hear it change? So here it is with the throat closed. In other words, not playing with hot air. Then here it is as it changes. And I open this and increase the resonant chamber. So that's what you've got to try and do with the harmonica as well, is open everything up. Let me show you on a low G. That's trying to employ all these tactics. Thanks, Red. And uh, this is trying to do the opposite. So, you know, there's an engineering thing, isn't it? Not that I'm an engineer. If you can't make it better, see if you can make it worse and kind of spread the difference between better and worse, good and bad, and try and understand what makes it go one way or the other. Try to, you know, learn about it by making it worse. So that's me really closing up the mouth and trying to close everything, pinch it all up. And then by opening it, you should hear a sound difference. How's the sound? I'm not sure how it'll come across. I'm just using the onboard mic for this particular session. Okay, so making it better, making it worse. 
There are other things you can do. You could use a little cup. This is a Vietnamese tea cup. You could use, um, that's with a closed back to it. You could use a uh, Lebanese, I think that is, chili can, which I stole after asking if I could steal it in Heathrow Airport, I think it was. So that one's got the open back, so it means that the sound will come out towards the listener very well, whereas this one has got a closed, and the sound is going to come back to me very well. So if I'm playing in a pub or something, I'll just grab a, a glass or a mug if I need a bit of acoustic amplification. Or you could use one of these ready-made, this is a, a harp wah from Roly Platt. Very nice bit of kit. Everybody wants kit, don't they? Me too. But you've got to try and make the harmonica do what you want it to do without using that kit. Try and make your hands do the job and your mouth and your throat and your breathing. So you've got to try and make all that happen. Now, the last point about tone I'm going to do tonight, which is the seventh, I think, point, is this beautiful exercise I got from Joe Felisco, and it's called Ha Ha Hoo Hoo. And it only uses the first two holes of the harmonica. And he likes to play on a G or an A, so I'm doing it on a G. And all you do is you go... So it's like whispering, ha, ha, hoo, hoo. One out breath, that's one breath, and then one in breath. Try it, come on, without the harmonica. So how am I making those changes? Are you doing the same thing? It's what we've just talked about. It's those things we just talked about. Moving the mouth to make it more resonant, make it more spacious, making it have higher capacity. So you can make it, you can make the tone worse by squeezing everything up. So doing that, you just shove the harmonica in your mouth. <clears throat> That's it. Try it. Try one more time. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. <coughs> it's a bit thirsty work, isn't it? So you do it at whatever speed you want to do, nice and slow. It doesn't really matter which you start with, in or out. It all ends up as the same thing. <clears throat> well, I'm sure your co-workers are thoroughly enjoying the sound you're making. <laughs> Grant. <laughs> no wonder they've all gone home. So once you've got a bit of a rhythm going, this is like a train sound, really. You can do it any speed you want. Start it very slowly, like a train does. I'm not using the right hand for this exercise. I could do later, but right now I don't want to. Now, as I do this, and same for you, when you do this, it's essentially very easy, isn't it? This is not hard. Anybody can do this. Even you can do this. It's not difficult. So you, when you're doing this, you just start to think about those points about tone that we've discussed. So when you're playing it, you think, oh, shove it further in my mouth. And let's see if it makes a difference. And 
then you tell me what does it does it make any difference if it, if it does use it if it doesn't make any difference forget about it like i said don't listen to me listen to yourself and then we talk about the more cavernous space in the mouth <laughs> Can you hear any sound difference? I think I can this end. So you try it, you tell me. And then you think about the playing with hot air or trying to not play, try to squeeze this up. Like to me, it seems to add a bit of extra warmth to it. It seems to sound nicer. With, you know, all musical, musical instruments, all musicians want to play their instruments to get great Tone. Tone's the holy grail, isn't it, with any instrument? You want the sound. You want a beautiful sound. Whatever you're playing, doesn't matter. You just want to get a beautiful sound. <laughs> then you think about this, you think about this, you think about the breathing from the belly, as we did. And then you can maybe challenge yourself a little bit on the speed and then the stamina. How long can you make this last? Is it 10 seconds? Is it 20? Is it a minute? And this will build up if you do it. So let's try building the speed up just a little bit. You do it at your speed. tripping over it so you do it at your speed and you challenge yourself don't worry about what i'm doing i'm challenging myself and then i'm going to try to just use this exercise to play um let's say big medium small so I'm going good tone, medium tone, bad tone, purposely. Can you hear the difference? I'm getting a bit lost with my good and bad. But can you see the dynamics of it changing? Really small, bad tone. Medium. Good. Then you can kind of mess around with it, just extending these ideas, playing with it. Now, this is a really good thing to do. This would be a great exercise, wouldn't it? Imagine if you did this every day for 5, 10, 15 minutes on the harmonica. Or if you're Grant in your office. Now you can bring this hand in as well, just to add some sub rhythms. One of the things which is extremely difficult to do is to play fast and quietly. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Yes, okay. <laughs> well done. Check it out. Um, fast and quiet, really hard. I mean, tr let me try and do it. You try and do it. Well, I'll do it first, then you can see what I mean. And I 
find I'm really pushing in on here to make that work. I don't know, maybe that's called supporting the diaphragm. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Very, very difficult, very difficult. This is something that Joe Falisco teaches a lot, and I've learned a lot from Joe. You can learn a lot from Joe. So um, I think that's probably all I'm going to do for tonight. That's 25 minutes of nonsense for you to enjoy and listen to. Hope you've got something out of it. Do write something. Let us know what you're thinking. Was it Was it any good? This is the, like I said, it's the first one I've done on youtube so i don't quite know if i've got technology right i don't have any any support here it's just me and my harmonica <laughs> okay i think i'll sign off now thank you so much um what else can i tell you if you want any more information about these the longer version the pre-recorded courses go to playharmonica.co.uk and you can Check them out there. There's some membership options or there's just one-off course options. That's the best place to buy my courses. They're, they're cheaper there than anywhere else. Okay. Thank you and good night.